coming up. What an excellent day for films. Do you like films, Father? <laughs> I know I, I, I sometimes call them movies, but, uh, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a real distinction between <laughs> movies and films, I think. Uh, you know, a film is like, uh, you know, well, it's not a movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, howdy, folks, and welcome to Minute 128 of The Exorcist Minute, a show where we endeavor to examine, extrapolate, and excavate The Exorcist. Minute by terrifying minute. My name is Lester Ryan Clark. And I'm Keenan Diaz. And we'll be your holy guides on this journey through what some have called the scariest movie of all time. Okay, so our minute begins with Kinderman saying, How's the girl? And it ends with him saying, Had your lunch? Yeah. Because lunch is important, Father. Do you like lunch, Father? <laughs> <laughs> I get sandwiches. I get sandwiches. <laughs> Mrs. K and I, we get all the best sandwiches. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the crusts cut off just perfectly. <laughs> You know, the tomato doesn't make the bread too soggy. It's. Yeah. <laughs> yes, folks, that is our Kinderman, always with the questions. But before we look at this minute, let us open our books. It is time for our last reading from the Book of Blatty. From across the street, he heard a squeal of brakes. He looked. A police car. Kinderman emerging. The detective moved slowly around the car and waddled toward Dyer. He waved. I came to say goodbye. You just missed him. Kinderman stopped in his tracks, crestfallen. They're gone? Dyer nodded. Kinderman looked down the street and shook his head. Then he glanced up at Dyer. How's the girl? She seemed fine. Ah, that's good. Very good. Well, that's all that's important. He looked away. Well, back to business, he wheezed. Back to work. Bye now, father. He turned and took a step toward the squad car then stopped and turned back to stare speculatively at Dyer. You go to films, Father Dyer? You like them? Oh, sure. (laughs) I get passes, he hesitated for a moment. In fact, I got a pass for the crest tomorrow night. You'd like to go? Dyer had his hands in his pockets. What's playing? Wuthering Heights. Who's in it? Heathcliff, Jackie Gleason, and in the role of Catherine Earnshaw, Lucille Ball. You happy? I've seen it, said Dyer. Kinderman stared limply for a moment, looked away. Another one, he murmured, then stepped to the sidewalk, hooked an arm through Dyer's, and slowly started walking him down the street. I'm reminded of a line in the film Casablanca, he said fondly. At the end, Humphrey Bogart says to Claude Rains, Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. You know, you look a little bit like Bogart. You noticed, in forgetting, they were trying to remember. The end. Hmm. Yeah. Does it say the end? I forget. It does say the oh, end. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Does it say fade out? <laughs> with, a, with, an, with a question mark <laughs> and an right. exclamation point? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So there you go, folks. Mm. Oh, no, wait. That's our, that's our McDonald's. <laughs> you like Big Mac's father? I get I get packets. <laughs> Free fries and the shake machine is never broken. That's how you know it's fiction. Right, I was gonna say. <laughs> then Dyer says, "What's the Happy Meal toy this week?" And he says. Godfather Tom Hagen, and from the French Connection, Sal Boca. And Dyer says, I have him. <laughs> you know, he says, I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> ah. You know, you know it, it's no longer going to be funny when McDonald's starts sponsoring us. <laughs> Oh, but we'll be so rich. Mm. <laughs> we'll have solid gold microphones. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just swimming in them fries. 
<laughs> right. That'll start to yeah. be the reviews. Like, I can't understand Keenan and Lester. They've, they've just got fries in their <laughs> mouth constantly. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Right. <laughs> Those solid gold microphones don't pick up shit. No. <laughs> no. No, not when your mouth is full of happiness. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, uh, folks, this one's almost word for word from mm-hmm. book to movie. Um, I almost didn't read it, but like it's the end. We got to, you know, we got to close this thing properly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, folks, this is the ending that Blatty wants for his story. And in the two years between book and movie, this was the ending that readers got. And they apparently liked it. Um in those two years, uh, from 71 to 73, the book uh, Spider Walked to the Top of the New York Times bestseller list remained number one for 17 weeks and stayed on the list for a total of 57 consecutive weeks. Um, and by the time the movie came out, the book had already sold over 13 million copies just in the U.S. and had been translated into uh, 10 to 13 languages, depending on my my sources, including French. Mm. I wonder what they they did for uh, Le Plume de Maton. Oh, yeah. What? Um, what? Yeah. What is the English, the uh, the American English version of that? Like, well, it's it's the pen of my aunt, right? <laughs> right. But I mean, like, no. What what's the version of like uh, Maria's at the library? You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Something Americans like that. Like, don't go to the library, so right? they can't see it. <laughs> they can't read. What we... <laughs> All right. Lester is at the McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. No, that is actually very very accurate for for American culture. I think. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Lester is at the library. That would be yeah. Um, but yeah, also also other languages, uh, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, mm-hmm. and German. Mm. Um, although in German, the title translates to uh, The Misadventures of Karl Engstrom. <laughs> um, and you turn it over and you mm-hmm. read the, the, the little blurb and it says, His white gloves hid a dark secret. <laughs> Karl, a man haunted by a past he can't escape finds himself scrubbing toilets and polishing silverware in the opulent Georgetown mansion of a hysterical movie star and her overly imaginative child. It's a life far removed from the one he once knew, but it's the only way he can help his daughter, whom the police believe is dead. (laughs) But when a shocking murder rocks the household, (laughs) Carl is the prime suspect. With his daughter's fate hanging in the balance and his own secrets threatening to unravel, Carl must fight to clear his name. Can he escape the mousetrap in time? (laughs) William Peter Blatty pulls out all the straps in this (laughs) fast-paced, adrenaline-fueled who or what done it. That's the German version, but Carl insists he's still Swiss. Yes. <laughs> we speak German in Switzerland. Yes. <laughs> One of three national languages. Yes. Educate yourself, American swine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But no, folks, that, that that is the end of our book. Mm-hmm. Keenan, what do we think of, of this ending just in the book, right? In, in service of the book. Yeah, you know... That's the power of books. I could read this last part real fast and just keep mm-hmm. the the dark memories of the previous uh, pre epilogue stuff of just mm-hmm. darkness and and hate and terrible things happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't need to spend as much time dwelling on all this happiness, which uh, it does rub me the wrong way in in, mm. in, in, in the book and, and the movie. Um, oh, okay. Yes, I know you like it. I know you want everyone mm-hmm. to to love each other and, <laughs> and hug each other and be in a nice cloud of, of happiness but yeah mm, no yeah i can i can kind of skim through it pretty quickly um yeah. but You're no. a little bit more realistic yeah. <laughs> or you know i'm reading a book to experience things i don't have to deal with my real life in my real life i want happiness and love and clouds True. and magic and all that yeah. yeah uh but i do again like the idea of putting the emotional weight of the story onto a side character Mm. I do like it better in the original film version, which is one side character here with uh-huh. two of them. You know, I'm not sure. But right. um, but yeah, I do like that idea of like, oh, God, this thing happened and it's so terrible. And there's repercussions of it. Like, what is this? Mm-hmm. Like, like you were talking about in previous minutes, right? Like, look at this house and something terrible happened here. And and these mm-hmm. are people who know something happened there, but they're not right. they're not first person narrators of that. And they're right. living with the ramifications of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's these tremors that mm-hmm. you know, kind of like spreading out all across the um, uh, the the people involved. Yeah, right. 
Yeah. 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 I, and, but just, you know, even for the book, mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I don't really understand ending on jokes. Mm. I, yeah. So even if it were like friendship or, or something, um, mm. yeah, I, I don't, I don't get that. I wonder if it, is more palatable if you think of it in terms of this book is unique uh, in Vladdy's repertoire, right? Mm-hmm. Because he's a comedy writer, because he's done uh, stuff a little bit uh, closer to Twinkle Twinkle Killer Kane, mm-hmm. or uh, you know, or or those other things. I think this story that he wrote was an outlier, and I think. I, you know, this sounds a little bit disrespectful to Blatty, but um, it's it's almost like he came upon the horror element by accident, uh-huh. trying to write a supernatural detective story, You're right? And it just happens to get adapted into mm-hmm. the the scariest movie ever made, right? Mm-hmm. And is and is forever known um, as like the the scariest story ever made, right? Yeah, yeah, we don't have to agree with what his intention was. Like we can, you know, mm-hmm. the the book is the book and we can, you know, we can be terrified of it and we can forget that it's a supernatural mystery story or anything and just focus mm-hmm. on on the kid and the mother and all that stuff, right? And like yeah. forget about the detective, which we might do. Um mm-hmm. like I'm sure people when they read in 1971 uh don't really remember kinderman like even though he's no, in it a lot so. right yeah, yeah yeah um and then and then you you know look at it again or see the movie certainly i think certainly when it's the movie and like that's how you end it, <laughs> the movie that's very memorable you know in tv y and s right like, yeah. oh that that's who this movie's about now yeah it almost seems like blatty is championing for kinderman a little bit more than uh the audience mm-hmm. yeah um mm-hmm. Yeah, and especially like him being, you know, the star of uh, of the sequel book, right? Yeah. Of Legion. Yeah, he's probably really um, fun to write. Oh yeah, like yeah, I yeah. imagine. Yeah, I mean, you know, just just reading, you know, um, I mean, you get you get kind of get all Kinderman all the time in <laughs> Legion, and and you know the quips are yeah the the the, the quips are, are 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 they just keep coming and coming, mm-hmm. right? Right. Um, but yeah, like as for this book. Yeah, I really like it. Um, probably comes as no surprise to anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, I said it before. I'll say it again. Mm-hmm. I am a sucker for Schmaltz. <laughs> um, but to that, I'll also say that it's not that I like the happy endings. Um, happy endings make me uneasy sometimes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I remember as a kid, like a movie would end happily, and I'd be like, "Well, how long is that going to last?" <laughs> You know, it's like, like, like happily ever after is such a foreign concept, like real life with all its ups and downs, you know? And I remember like happy endings giving me anxiety, just thinking about like, okay, so they're, they're never allowed to be sad now, Mm -hmm. like, or mad, right? Like uh, the prince and the princess are never going to (laughs) fight or like, you know, the next day, one of the characters like really starts to feel the uh, PTSD of the, of the climactic fight with the villain and the rest of the characters turn to her like, like, no. We're happily ever after now. Only smiles, no tears. Like, mm-hmm. like if anyone like died in the movie, even the villain, like a happy ending should not be on the table. Like you're you're gonna tell me Dorothy goes back to Kansas and she doesn't have dreams about a woman melting before her eyes. <laughs> You're going to tell me that Luke Skywalker, who just learned that his dad was alive mm-hmm. and then immediately lost him, is down there on Endor being like, yep, nub. <laughs> or whatever you know oh i think you protest i bet you know that entire song backwards and forwards <laughs> well yeah it's 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 just yub nub oh. it's like... <laughs> uh but no if i think about it for a second i'm like man happy endings like what what's the deal with them um so you know, you'd be at like... the wedding for the prince and princess and be like it's not gonna last <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, no, no. Okay. Like, I think that's so. So, I'm, I'm, I'm in the in between, mm-hmm. right? Like, like we have just been through hell, right? Right. So don't, don't give me paradiso, <laughs> right? That's jarring, right? That's too much. And on some purgatorio, right? <laughs> the char- the characters are slowly healing, slowly getting back to some kind of normal. They're, mm-hmm. they're learning. They're reflecting. I think this book sums it up perfectly in the last line: in forgetting they were trying to remember. Mm-hmm. I like that line, yeah. Yeah, right? Kinderman and Dyer are bonding over a mutual loss. Mm-hmm. And rather than, you know, um, suffer alone, which is kind of like the – that's what everyone was doing in this story. Mm-hmm. It feels like they've learned and they're like, no, you know what? We're going to become friends, right? And they walk off stage holding each other up. And we think, 
they're going to be okay, Mm -hmm. right? The McNeils leave. They go back home, and we imagine it's not all sunshine and rainbows, right? All sunshine and dumbbirds, (laughs) right? Chris probably takes an even longer break from acting while Mm -hmm. she and Reagan figure out what the hell just happened Mm -hmm. and how they move on from it, right? Like you pointed out, Keenan, Reagan's not done growing up. Both she and mom still have a whole teenage phase to look forward to what's that going to be like? Just just regular school, dating, college, right? Like maybe they go into therapy. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And and I like that I don't know. They exit the stage not completely healed, but also not completely broken. We get the feeling that they're going to be okay, not right now, but eventually. That's the kind of endings that I like. So not a happy ending, mm-hmm. but a hopeful ending, right? Yeah, I think it. this is like screenwriting advice. It's, it's a good thing to shoot for. Not every movie needs it, but mm. but by the end of the story, uh, there's something lost and something gained. Yeah. Right. So they, they've become, even if it's a happy ending, there's something they've lost, whatever their innocence, they've lost mm-hmm. their, um, their sense of childhood, their, their ignorance of the world you know right. any, any of those things and sometimes friends and family and mentors mm-hmm. and, and like actual physical losses of people who've died or moved away right. or turned into villains or something like that yeah yeah right yeah this is this is the next chapter right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you know it's kind of like bittersweet that it's like oh we don't get to follow them on this this is like you know this is their thing right mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I, I like this ending. I like that our story ends on a hopeful note amidst all this like sadness and, and trauma. Um, if this book didn't have those, those three, uh, good themes, right. Conviction, communion, and hope, um, to like counterbalance all the doubt, all the isolation and despair. I don't think this would be one of my favorite books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, if you are unhappy with the happy ending, you could just keep reading uh, Legion <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah. see what happens oh, yeah. to, to our, our heroes here and uh, watch the movie Exorcist 3. Uh, and mm-hmm. that reminds me of this um, Orson Welles quote. Let me really pull this up and get it right. Mm-hmm. If you want... Oh, hold on. Orson Welles. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Rosebud's frozen, frozen peas. Fro- <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Peel's frozen peas full of... <laughs> Country goodness and green penis. <laughs> no, that's terrible. <laughs> All right. If you want a happy ending, that depends, of course, on where you stop your story. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right? Good. They're thinking, Mister W. Yeah, yeah. Shoot him! Shoot him! Just as he sees the dust bunnies. <laughs> Or the rabbits or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. They could have ended they could have ended George and uh Lenny's story. Yeah, would just yeah. as as soon as they get out of the 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 the, the county, I guess, and just be mm-hmm, like, Oh, mm-hmm. well, thank God. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that that's all over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, folks, let's get back to the top of this minute in our film here. Dyer has told Kinderman that he just missed the McNeils, and now as Dyer walks the rest of the way up to him, Kinderman steps away from the gate, and at first, you look at his face, and he's got that craggy, scary look, and when Dyer enters the frame, they get really close up to each other mm-hmm. and sort of, like, square up. It really looks like Kinderman is going to, like, book them for aiding and abetting like <laughs> like you knew i was coming and you let him get away like do you feel that i do feel how how awkwardly close together they are yeah i don't know it's if like I'm they're a... gonna bump chests or something <laughs> yeah i see what you mean i don't know if i'm afraid of kinderman in these moments but mm, but yeah, yeah i see what you mean yeah they're they're really really close to each other yeah yeah mm. it's like they're just like like face to face they're like i'm gonna like, <laughs> But that's just his face. You can't help it. That's just William F. Kinderman's face. That's true. That's true. <laughs> he has resting. Let's do you want to take this outside face. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's resting crag face. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, then um, his first words are, mm-hmm. how's the girl? Yeah. And we all breathe a sigh of relief. Um, the case is closed. He is not uh, going to like dog their trail. Right. He's he's legitimately concerned for them. Um, but I guess in your case, Kenny, like you weren't, you weren't worried. About I don't know why I'm not worried. Cause of course that, that makes sense. And of course he looks the way he does. And of course he's mm-hmm. trying to, he was trying to arrest uh, somebody and uh, yeah, I don't know why I'm not afraid of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Listeners. Yeah. Like, uh, like write in and, and, and tell us what you think. Like, like how, when did you, when did you 
feel like oh it's it's all right like he's not he's yeah, not like after him anymore yeah. right 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 yeah all the conflict all the conflict is gone right yeah. yeah um but yeah so so um he asks how's the girl and dyer says she seemed fine and you can see for both of them that's not the most satisfactory answer um like dyer was hoping that he could talk to her mm-hmm. and figure out what the hell happened to dimmy um but he hadn't been allowed to and Kinderman also probably wanted like some details, not, you know, just for the case, but like just so he could wrap his head around all of this. Right. Right. Well, if if he I think this is in the film a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, it's more implied. But in the book, we know that he has gone to um, Demi and said, like, hey, what do you think I should do here? So. Right. And he didn't act in time. And now Demi and Marin are dead. And mm-hmm. yeah, so mm-hmm. he, he he has some guilt, you know, about not yeah. not stepping in. So I think that's subtextually here. Like he mm-hmm. he did not solve this in time to save some lives. Right. Yeah. So so he's going to be haunted. Mm-hmm. Dyer's going to be haunted. And yeah. And, and all they have is she seemed fine. Right. Right. <laughs> and we can't even be 100 percent sure on that. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And, you know, so Kinderman does the exact same thing that Dyer did when mm-hmm. uh, when Chris told him uh, that Reagan doesn't remember Dyer. Dyer had said that's good, like half to himself, almost like he's he's convincing himself mm-hmm. that her well-being is more important than his closure. Mm-hmm. Um. And here, uh, Kinderman sort of sighs and he looks away and he says, again, more to himself. He's mm-hmm. like, that's important. <laughs> um, and, and we can see him saying goodbye to all of those unanswered questions. Mm-hmm. And, and he says it twice. Like, well, no, that's, that's the important thing, um, that she is fine or seems fine. Mm-hmm. That's important. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and after a moment, he looks back up at Dyer and you can see him – trying to find the next thing to say trying to trying to get back to a sense of normalcy it's like well you know that was a thing in my life now back to back to you know kinderman's day to day right mm-hmm. uh so yeah so he's trying to be like well you know and and just move on but he's got to say that twice too mm-hmm. because because you know the first one didn't almost like didn't work he says well well back to business, back to work, right? Mm-hmm. So he says, you know, well twice, and then he says back to business, and then it's almost like that's not good enough either. He has to say back to work, right? Like back to work, got to get busy so I don't, you know, think about this anymore, mm-hmm. right? But so yeah. he's saying that that this visit to uh, Reagan was not business, was not work? He's doing See, I, this just as a concerned citizen and not as a detective? I guess, mm-hmm. or he's like this, he, he's convincing himself that this case is closed uh-huh. back to, like, once once a case is closed, it's no longer his business. Uh-huh, right. It's right? sunny California's business now. Yeah, right? Yeah. Forget it, Jake. It's Georgetown. <laughs> right. Well, right. Uh, there's no sh- chance that little girl's going to come back here yeah. to Georgetown. My jurisdiction is yeah, <laughs> certainly not with her mother. No. <laughs> if anything, she'll come back with the nanny who lives here. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll all know that it was meant to be the mother. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll be a little older and the, the effects won't be as good. And, uh... <laughs> but it'll have a sort of a charm to it regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll, you know, it'll, people, it'll be trying people something. People remember it yeah. fondly. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know. yeah. It's trying interesting so, things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Taking the genre to new places. Yeah. <laughs> Dyer's just like, what? What are you? And you won't be there, but you'll you'll be there with me in the third one. But but I won't be there either. I'll be somebody else. <laughs> uh, yeah. So so yeah. So so um, Kinderman's doing the same thing that uh, that that Dyer was doing. He's talking to himself. He's mm-hmm. like, you know, like, you know, back to business, back to work, got to get busy so so I don't think about this anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and he reaches out a hand, uh, which Father Dyer takes, and they shake, and he says, goodbye, Father. And, uh, you know, Dyer replies, goodbye. And they begin to go their separate ways. Um, but we're still on Kinderman here, uh, and you can see even before the handshake is done, his face falls and he looks away, looks inward, and you can see it hitting him like, well, back to my lonely life and my private grief, right? Mm-hmm. 
Um, even though, you know, he's married, but, uh, you know, it's like he's he's very much alone in this film. Right. Uh, just like everybody else. I doubt um, he meant <clears throat> that you know, bothers Mrs. K about this kind of thing. No, 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 no. Even no, one, right? you know, like the reason why we're focusing him on him in this movie is because he's never seen a case like this. And this is right. you know, something that might shake him to his core. But even then, I don't think he's like waking her up in the middle of the night and being no. like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they might, you know, they might like share a moment. It's like, you know, it's like, what's, what, what's wrong? Like what's troubling you? And he'll, he'll tell her as much as he feels is, Mm -hmm. you know, like not going to hurt her or, or, you know, uh, uh, worry her. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's, that's as far as he'll go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. But yeah. Um, or folks, Mm -hmm. you could also read it as a, as Kinderman right now. Um, uh, uh, getting the idea right there to ask Dyer out to a movie, and he's sort of like mustering up the courage, but he's, he's he like sort of chickened out, like and and broke the handshake, right? And he's walking away, um, and he's kind of thinking about, it. like, oh, I could have asked him right then, but I but I didn't, right? What do you th- like? Which one do you think is a little bit more? What what's going on with Kinderman as he as he breaks the handshake and he walks away? Yeah, because I mean, Kinderman is this guy who we see. Uh, you know, oh, hey, here's a here's a face value conversation. And then we step away and it's just one more thing. Right. Columbo style. Right. Yeah. But I don't think he's doing that here on purpose. No. Right. So so I do think that he doesn't quite come to realize that until they that he wants to ask him to go to the movies until they actually separate. Like, I don't mm. think I don't think you know what I mean. I think he's the spider yeah. with the fly in this situation, right. the way that he is with Chris earlier in the mm. movie. No, that's yeah, that's a that's a, a great observation. Yeah, this is this is him. I stumbling upon the role of Columbo. <laughs> right, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like this it, it's he's it's it's he's getting possessed by Columbo almost. <laughs> <Yeah>? That's right. <laughs> but so yeah, they 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 part. Um Dyer's already heading down the street and it looks like Kinderman is getting ready to cross the street. Mm-hmm. Um but we cut and he stops at the curb. It's a it's a medium shot in profile. Uh we got red bricked Georgetown behind him and I like how he stops in front of the do not enter mm-hmm. sign in the background. Um, it feels like more of that, um, you know, treating 3D like 2D, mm-hmm. right? The sign is the sign is way off in the distance. But if you were drawing all of this on a piece of paper, right, on a 2D plane, uh-huh. it's like he stops in front of this sign that says do not enter. Mm-hmm. And we talked about how, you know, filmmakers use this to make characters small or big or opposing or agreeing in relation to the other characters. Keenan, do you think this was a conscious one here like or just a coincidence that the sign happens to be no no it wouldn't be a coincidence because you could put anything there and then like if you know friedkin and roisman they pull up a shot and they're like oh we have this distracting you don't enter sign they'll just move Mm. the camera a couple inches to the left or the right and get the shot that they want yeah um i don't think they put it there i don't Mm. i don't know you've been there i haven't do you remember this do not enter sign there i I don't like like (laughs) oh god was that i'm just tied to a chair it's like was there a do not enter sign <laughs> yeah but that's the kind of thing where you could look up on then and now movie location so then oh, yeah. now movie locations.com where uh mm. that that's a wonderful thing there i bet they would love it if you were to go anyone to go to this space and, and take a look at what's around there um yeah because they, they they have those great pictures of healy hall right uh, right yeah. right yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah um so yeah so we we got it in our movie this this do not enter which mm-hmm. yeah i think was was also um uh intentional and um i'm thinking it could it could either be you know don't enter into this conversation mm-hmm. into this relationship don't get more involved uh or mm-hmm. cuz he's stopping he's stopping at the sign right. he's turning away from it towards Dyer. so it could be like this is the way you came from you can't go back this way Mm-hmm. You can't you can't go back to your old craggy life. Like this is a one way street. You got to find another way out of this grief. Hey, maybe you can take the scenic route with Dyer. Mm-hmm. You know? So you're reading this is really symbolic. This do not enter sign. It's not yeah. as like prominent in the frame as like in Citizen Kane, which opens right. with no trust, no trespassing, yeah, um, and yeah. then ends with no trespassing, and then there's another shot after that. Um, so it's mm-hmm. not quite the last shot, um, but yeah, that's that's right in the middle of the frame. That's all you could see, but but that's there here, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know, Friedkin loves Citizen Kane. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw this uh, little um, 
thing he did for the AFI specials on what, what you know, the hundred best movies ever made. And, uh-huh. um, and he has like a good, like 14 minute clip of him just talking about it. He said, it's the best movie ever made. And uh-huh. He said, it's a quarry for filmmakers. This is Friedkin um, saying, uh-huh. because it just has, it has everything right about cinematography, editing, lighting, mm. performance, like everything you think of, it's there for you to mine. Um, he says the reason he became a filmmaker so um mm. you know and him discovering it he tells that story in that video about him uh someone told him hey you got to go down and look at citizen kane you know by then it's an old movie by the time he was a um, a young man watching it and he right. said he went in the morning and stayed and watched every single screening of citizen kane that day oh, the wow. theater played so he, so he said eight times <laughs> christ eight times <laughs> yeah so you know he he would be familiar with this no trespassing idea and this like symbolic mm. sign. So yeah, I wouldn't put yeah. it past him here. Yeah, All right. So yeah, so so Kinderman stops at mm-hmm. this sign. Uh, well, not really. He stops at the corner. Um, <laughs> Just to point out that Kinderman is not a car. No, and no. he can go past the two not enter sign if he wants yeah. to, <laughs> and not be breaking any laws in the district. <laughs> uh, um, um, do you like? drive-ins father (laughs) do you like uh filling stations father i get gases i get gases (laughs) of course i like fillings i need them to survive we are cars in this universe (laughs) you know i like to go into the subtle differences of of unleaded and premium and Have I bitched you about the movie Cars? <laughs> have I bored you with all of this? No, but I, I have a feeling I'm in for I'm in for a, a ride. <laughs> now this is a children's movie. Yes, from twenty years Cars, ago. Cars, not the Exorcist, right? <laughs> so I realize that the target audience of Cars doesn't give two two diaper shits about <laughs> mm-hmm. about my problems with this movie right. but it is it is it's, it took me several tries to to force myself through it because it was so mm. maddening mm-hmm. uh, this world where <laughs> where okay so they're cars right yes <laughs> all the characters are cars yes. So there's gas stations, right? Like we were just yes. we were just talking about. Oh, of course I need mm-hmm. to go to gas because that's how I eat, right? Right. So why are there diners? So there's gas stations, yeah, and there's diners, yeah, and then in some of the like little shorts, there's hospitals, mm-hmm. but there's also mechanic shops, yeah. <laughs> and they have hotels for the cars, mm-hmm. and they're little mm-hmm. buildings that you know, like a motel where you would go and stay, but the cars just stay outside in the parking lot. So what's the right. what's the motel for? Less you say mm-hmm. right. Like my therapist (laughs) you're just reflecting back through yes so you're so you're angry at the movie because of its inconsistency it's it's inconsistency is a very kind word (laughs) (laughs) like why 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 do the planes in the cars universe leave Uh tire tracks in the sky Instead of contrails. Wait, they leave tire tracks in the sky? Sto- yes, the their contrails are tire track shaped. Well, that, that, well, that is dumb. Um... <laughs> and there are some animals in in the world. Right. Mm-hmm. But they, but so there's like the, um, there's like the cow, they go cow tipping. Mm-hmm. And they're tractors. Okay, fine, whatever. Sure, sure. But then they get disturbed by the bull who comes out of the the, the field. Mm-hmm. And the bull is a thresher. Right, yeah. So, so bulls mate with cows to get new cows and bulls, right? I think you're, I think you're thinking... <laughs> So. A little, a little too deeply. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> no, don't you dare. <laughs> so threshers mate with tractors. <laughs> That's what they're telling us. <laughs> I mean, you know, um, I mean, you know, let's let's just go all the way. It's like why uh-huh. are why are the uh, you know the gas stations seemingly made for human hands and. and <laughs> And human height and, you know, and all that. Yeah. Well, well, why? Yeah. And, and 
you, you know, like for me, I think the, I'm so used to seeing, you know, like those Chevron commercials where mm-hmm. their eyes are, are the headlights. Oh yeah. That now I see their eyes as the windows and I'm like, well, that's, that's incorrect. Yeah. And the you cars know. universe there, yeah. they're, they're, they're the windows for sure. Yeah. Well, cause in the cars universe, there aren't people. Yeah. In the Chevron commercial universe, there are people for sure. Right. <laughs> Thus eyes are headlights and not <laughs> right. windows not that are blocking the view of the people yeah mm, mm, mm. and this goes to be also the show now that that's all my original vetching about uh, uh-huh. cars but you have seen and why isn't the mouth <laughs> the you know the gas uh um yeah uh, <laughs> they, they what are we implying out they asses yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you have seen the the um someone pointed out that in cars 2 there's the pope in the pope mobile the Pope, like the as pope, a car, the Pope car, yes, the Pope car <laughs> in is, his own is pope-mobile. in a Pope mobile. Yes. Mm-hmm. Why didn't they just have the Pope mobile be <laughs> the, the 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 analog for the Pope? You, well, <laughs> that that's that's such an easy joke. Yeah, he well, he's he's driven on the back. He's the car Pope, and he's in like the back of a flatbed truck. But uh-huh. he has the bulletproof glass around him. Like, I mean, if we're going, like, <laughs> why don't we have the Pope mobile mm-hmm. in a in a fleshy um, <laughs> uh, uh, enclosure with with um, Pope Francis's uh, face on it? <laughs> like, let's just go all the way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, that was so blasphemous. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right, but this is from oh, I was finally gonna read the uh you know, we quote all these memes and I was finally gonna read like the author of this the tweet this time, like uh-huh. near the end of it, like we should do like their authors, like any book, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is from the pullout king on Twitter. <laughs> oh Sh- okay. <laughs> and he says mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, that's his name. I need to cite my sources. Sure, sure, yeah. The fact that the Pope exists in Cars 2 and rides within a Pope mobile not only proves the existence of Catholicism in the Cars universe, <laughs> but also that the 1981 assassination attempt occurred also. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad we are... We are... <laughs> We are filling in the corners of, of the Cars universe. Right. Oh, and now yeah. this meme doesn't have the – someone has deleted wait, the uh... – Wait, 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 mm-hmm. Keenan. Mm-hmm. So so we have established that Catholicism exists yep. in, in the Cars in universe. In the Cars universe. Mm-hmm. There's a good chance that a version of the Exorcist exists. <laughs> okay, okay. I was, I, was, I, was, I was tolerating this <laughs> until now, but okay – we did. We did the one with animals. What? What? What's? What's everybody's car? Oh, I don't know cars enough. Uh, I'd s- <laughs> same. <laughs> I barely know a car I drive. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Chris is a Mercedes. Okay. All right. I'll give right. you that. Yeah. 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 Um, Reagan yeah. had been a power wheel, but she's she's been converting to, right <laughs> to a nice starter car, a VW. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That works. That works. <laughs> Right. Um, Karis is a hearse. Oh, geez, yeah, <laughs> that that that's very accurate. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, Dyer is like a um, a, uh, a a Mini Cooper with <laughs> 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 like with like with the uh, the UK the British flag for some reason just to be sure. <laughs> just to be showy. Yeah, and he's got. I mean, he's got the um, you know the 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 little. Um, like bobbleheads on uh-huh, his yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. on his dash, right? The Snoopy bobbleheads and, and all that stuff. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> Kinnaman's a cop car. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's his Crown Victoria. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> um, Sharon is a buggy. A buggy, you know, horse drawn. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and uh, and and Carl and Willie mm-hmm. are a motorcycle, and uh, the little um, oh you know, the passenger. sidecar, yeah, little yeah. Sidecar, right? oh that's cute. Yeah, but who is in who, <laughs> or who is who? That's that's. I think we know who's in who. I think right. that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ew. Um, well, I thought so. Yes, the Exorcist exists in the Cars universe. I thought you were going to pick up where this meme trail leaves off, which is of course that car Jesus exists in the car's oh. world. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And died for 
the cross on in a car somehow. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever the cross version would be in, in the cars universe. You know when you see those those um those uh um those tow trucks and they have their apparatus kind of like all mm-hmm. folded up in the back, doesn't it kind of look like a cross? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. Yeah. Um Forgive them, Father. They know not what they drive. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> take this, take this unleaded um, diesel, for it is my. No, no. Yeah, I think I think we've 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 exhausted that joke. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, okay, so he he stops at this sign, um, <laughs> this do not enter sign, um, and uh, and and uh, he he's looking down, looking inward, uh-huh. and uh, he uh, he has it, it's like he has stopped without meaning to, yeah, and you see him make that decision. He's gonna try to be this guy's friend, and he turns and he says, "Father Dyer." And whether it was intentional by Kinderman, um, it was definitely intentional by Friedkin. I think mm-hmm. the way he calls to Father Dyer sounds like he's doing a Columbo, right? Mm-hmm. He's about to reveal that like Dyer was the mastermind behind all of this, right? <laughs> Did you get that feeling? Like it's it's not a friendly like, oh, by the way, Father Dyer, right? It's more like Father Dyer, Father Joseph Dyer. <laughs> That's your name, isn't it? That's what you call yourself now, right? <laughs> right. Like what? But it, like back in ancient Mesopotamia, you yeah. went by another name, <laughs> right? We cut to Dyer, and he he doesn't even turn. He just right. starts running. <laughs> uh, you you haven't seen the Dune movies, have you? No, no. Oh, I love these Dune movies. I love them so much, and they make mm. they make me understand for the first time what Star Wars fans and Star Trek fans and Lord of the Rings fans are all on about. Oh, okay. Because normally I'm like, oh, those are all fine, but I, I have trouble with like the lore and the classes of names and the, mm-hmm. you know, and why do we have to have different language? And then, and then Dune has all of that. And I'm like, yes, yeah. yes, I finally wow. understand that. Yes, yeah, so you I'm, are the exact opposite of me. <laughs> but, go, but like, no, no, no. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait on that. Um, oh, okay, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, in the second in the second movie, it's a, it's such a dumb line. I recognize that if you don't mm-hmm. don't just like love these movies, but mm-hmm. um, but so they're on you know this planet Arrakis, it's called right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then Paul um, Paul is talking, and he's he's he's, he's becoming more. Uh, he's he's a colonizer, yeah. But mm-hmm. he's getting to understand the world of of Arrakis, and he's like right. psychic. He's becoming psychic. He's understanding things, mm-hmm. and he and he says. Um, but Arrakis went by a different name, by a Fremen name, which is one of the languages that I care about now. <laughs> it was a Fremen name. And that name was, and you know what the name was. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. Uh, Do you have any guesses? Uh, Dune? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it went by a different name back then. And then I'm like, oh my God, look at it. <laughs> it goes, Dune. And I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which, first of all, is an English name, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not a feminine name, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you went yeah. by a different name, Father Dyer, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Joey Dyer, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah of course, <laughs> Snoopy. <laughs> and, Dyer, and Dyer just he's like Dyer's caught right, and he could. He could run or he could fight, right? And he just mm-hmm. thinks about it. And he just he just turns back to the kid and he says, Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then it's and they cut to a um uh, a two shot, you know, or I guess mm-hmm. it'd be a wide shot because they're so far apart, right? Right, right, right. And then they start doing the little <laughs> right. And he's doing that little dance with their with their heads bobbing. And, right, yeah. right, 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 right. <laughs> Looking directly at the camera somehow right. that they haven't done that before. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say, uh, Keenan, you're mm-hmm. you're you are the exact opposite mm-hmm. uh of me 
uh, in your appreciation for Dune. Um, yeah. I am I am all about those others. I'm all about, you know, the Star Wars lore, mm-hmm. the Lord of the Rings lore. I can't mm-hmm. get enough of that stuff. I will I will get the books and I will just like lose myself in all the, uh-huh. yeah. the pages about, you know, like the big ats and who's related and this and, you know, the, <laughs> right, the history right. of the stuff that's not even in the movies. But like, I'll, I'll you know, look at it. Right. Mm-hmm. Or not even in Tolkien's books. Like I'll read about like, you know. Right. Uh, uh, like these these other elves or, or whatever that don't even appear in uh, you know in any of the books or whatever, mm-hmm. but I I I tr- I remember very clearly um, picking up Dune mm-hmm. because it 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 looked so interesting and it had such an interesting story attached to it. It was mm-hmm. in, like in uh, middle school and uh, you know like we had to pick a, a book right mm-hmm. and I was like oh this this seems like really really cool right. Um, and I just remember the first fucking page, you know, coming across something like Gom Jabbar. And I'm like, what the fuck is Gom Jabbar? And I'm like, well, luckily for us, mm-hmm. it has a whole glossary, <laughs> you know, either at the back or the front of the book. Right. And I remember just like, okay, I'm just going to go mm-hmm. over and I'm going to look at the Gom Jabbar. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay, the Gom Jabbar is the... Uh, is the schmindel schmack of the <laughs> of the of the bloop blop, and I'm like, what the hell is the bloop blop now? And I had to look that up, and it's like, mm. well, the bloop blop is actually the schmindel schmacks for number <laughs> and I'm like, could you get? Like, I want to just read the book, you know? <laughs> no, that's exactly what I am with all this other stuff, though. Right. And I haven't I haven't read the Dune books yet. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of doing it because I might yeah spend dozens of hours of my whole life and yeah you, know. you have to like like you're, you're going on a, a really really good uh uh you know uh trot it's a really great pace and then you just like stop because you have to learn what a fucking gom jabbar that's, is that's how i feel about lord of the rings and um and harry potter and uh game of thrones and all of that stuff no so. no, no no like like because th- those books do the job of like you know uh, 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 the uh oh jeez like now i can't think of any you know <laughs> It's like we must we must go to to Rivendell. That is the land of these types of elves, and Elrond dwells there. And you're like, great, it's a place. I know it. I mm-hmm. like it's. That's all I need to know, right? Mm-hmm. But like in here, it's like, well, what do you think of the Gom Jabbar? And I'm like, I don't know if that's a person. <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know if that's a place. I don't know if that's a a, a color. Mm-hmm. Like like what like what do we you know? And then and then you look and and it. It tells you it's like well the Gom Jabbar is in relation to see this other thing, <laughs> and it's like ten minutes before you get back to the story, mm-hmm. and then the new paragraph has something else that you gotta <laughs> look up. Right, and the movie just has actors. It has you know Timmy right. Chalamet and Josh Brolin, and, and yeah, right, it has Wonka, there. you know. <laughs> Right. And he, I never asked what an everlasting gobstopper was. <laughs> Didn't need to. What's an Oompa Loompa? I see it right there. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, no, 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 not to, not to, I, I, I recognize the, the contribution uh, of Dune. Mm-hmm. I, I should read it. It's my fault. I'm stupid. <laughs> Listeners. It invented Star Wars. I mean, I don't want to start a whole thing on our, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's, it's like, it's like. 15 years before Star Wars, isn't it? This this is the episode that we're going to piss everybody <laughs> off. <laughs> I've read the books. I've read the books. I just... Uh, but I like, I'm just looking at my checklist here. We got Lord of the Rings fans, Star Wars fans. <laughs> like, who else? Who else? Exorcist yeah. fans. We're like, come on, right at the end. <laughs> yeah, I haven't read those books. I'm, I'm But, uh, you know, but mm-hmm. I have read a calendar and Dune <laughs> came out before Star Wars. So There you go. There you go. <laughs> So he's like he's like a medium for the past. <laughs> it's a little culturally appropriated turban. I can I can tell you exactly what has happened already. That's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, this, well, this one's a long, long time in the future. So I'll just make mine a long, long time in the past. Yeah, there you go. That's it. All right. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, speaking of which, folks, um, you might, uh, I wasn't going to say this, but, uh, you know, when uh, when uh, Kinderman, you know, stops and he's and he's looking down, right? He's right in front of that do not enter sign, right? Mm-hmm. You see that guy? See that guy walking mm-hmm. in the background, right? You might think, you might think that's just another extra, but no, no. George Lucas. <laughs> Right? Just tell people that's not true. Come on, we have to be very clear about that. Because, uh, yeah, 
Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's not true. No, um, that's not true. It's a, no, it's, a, it's a pigeon, first of all. Exactly. Right? <laughs> um, it's a it's a pigeon that they hired to be to to to, to be a a, a guy mm-hmm. uh, in this in, in the background. <laughs> and boy, you want to talk acting prowess, mm-hmm. like. Hmm. Um, <laughs> but no. I almost didn't. I almost didn't bring up that guy walking in the background, but I was like, "We have to. We have to talk about everything." And it, like, like just the way he's walking. Like, do you see the way he's walking? It's it's a it's a very uh, specific, distinct way. <laughs> we don't. We don't need to be talking about this. Okay. 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 <laughs> Whatever this is. <laughs> Hold yeah. on. Let me look. Because I no. I'm just looking at the pigeon. Let me see here. Uh-huh. I will look at this guy for you, Lester. Okay. Yeah, I think he's just trying to hide his face from the camera. Yeah, I I have a feeling that uh, Friedkin was like, "Look, you're you're just gonna you're not gonna fuck up my shot. You're just gonna walk through there. I want uh, Georgetown to feel like it has some life in it." And he's like, he's like, "Oh, oh, oh!" But Mr. Director, because he's not gonna call him Billy, right? No. Whoever this guy is, right? He's like, "Oh, oh, what's my, what's my what's my uh, motivation? Your motivation is to get from here to there, and beyond that, I don't give a flying fuck." <laughs> and so you can see that what I'm saying, folks, is mm-hmm. in the background, this uh, this this actor, you can see the fear and determination <laughs> in his step. Mm-hmm. All right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's what we're not supposed to be paying attention to. No, no. But you're saying we're supposed to think he's getting Columboed here. Yeah, right. Yeah, which, I, which I don't pick up on, but I totally see what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, like that. That's that's what I felt. Um, yeah. I was like, oh no, what's gonna what's gonna happen to Father Dyer? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and we cut, and we're talking seconds here, folks. Yeah. Right. Just se- like, but the decision for Dyer not to turn around all you know bright eyed and innocent like uh huh right <laughs> like like he like he probably normally does right. um like he would if dimmy called his name right yeah, yeah. um he'd be like oh hey dimmy what's up <laughs> um here he stops and he turns around mm-hmm. he doesn't look guilty i'm not i'm not saying that he looks puzzled yeah. um but also maybe a little wary i don't know to me um mm-hmm. or again am, Keenan, am I just trying to stretch these last minutes out as long as possible? <laughs> Seeing things where they ain't ought to be, making commentaries about like uh, some background guy. Yeah, no, this is important. The stuff about Dyer, the background guy. <laughs> no disrespect to background actors. He might be one of our <laughs> listeners. He's like, oh. But no, I see what you're saying. I don't pick up on that. Maybe hmm. again, it's that TV YNS. Um, uh, you know, uh, baggage that I have personally mm-hmm. where I'm like, just, just get, get over with this. <laughs> so, oh yes, I would love our show to continue going on mm-hmm. and it's going to, it's going to keep going on. Uh, yeah. cause we have minutes of credits that we're going to fill with all sorts of interesting stuff. Yeah. But yeah, when I'm watching it, just as the viewer, I'm like, I am done. When he <laughs> looks away from the stairs, None of this is happening. <laughs> this is all a bad dream. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're back in the in the, in the therapist's office again. Yes. It's like, uh-huh. it's like, and then he and then he like like keeps talking to the detective. And I'm like, right. uh huh, uh huh. But it's not about the devil. It's not about the demon, right? <laughs> and your podcast, your invisible podcast, your imaginary <laughs> friends. <laughs> Do they talk about the movie? <laughs> no, they're talking about movies that came out. <laughs> 50 years later people not even born yet playing Willy Wonka <laughs> right Willy Wonka <laughs> is he the one with the Gom Jabbar in, in another universe sure <laughs> ah. But yeah, folks, we don't have to wait long to find out what Kinderman wants. Mm-hmm. Uh, while we're still on Dyer, we hear his voice ask, do you go to films? And everyone breathes a sigh of relief. Or again, you know, I breathe a sigh of relief. Like, like, oh, thank God. It's not more questions, more mm-hmm. angles to this investigation. Um, and that's another trope I, I've seen. Um, it's so obscure. I, I didn't think it even had a name. Mm. But it's like... You establish that this character has an annoying trait, and it's dumb, and it's stupid, and you don't really think about it, and then you end up being glad when it pops up for the last time. Either it, like, saves the day, or, or like, here, we thought something bad was going to happen, we thought we were dealing with, uh, you know, Kinderman the detective, but no, it's just Kinderman the schmaltzy movie buff. Um, mm. I, I tried to find the name for this trope, and apparently there is one, mm. uh, 
it is known as Chekhov's gag. Oh, that's a so, good name, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like so so much like Chekhov's gun, right? Where mm. you know, you show a gun in the first act and it's got to go off by act 3. Chekhov's gag is where you establish a dumb gag or a mm. character trait and it ends up playing an important role in the climax. Right? Uh, have we planned that for our show? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't you, looked ahead. Yeah, <laughs> Are we you'll doing just that? have to wait and see. <laughs> but yeah, so so he asks, "Do you go to films?" Mm-hmm. Um, to which Dyer replies, "Sure." And before we cut back to Kinderman, I just wanted to to point out the the grass in the background uh, behind <laughs> Dyer. Keenan, Keenan, do you see? Do you see the grass? Is this where I look off into the distance and I say, "I don't see it, Lester. Where's the grass?" <laughs> Is the grass coming, Lester? <laughs> Joe, just keep looking, buddy. Just keep looking, right? <laughs> keep analyzing, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> we'll keep analyzing forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but no, folks. Um, if you if you're if you're looking at at uh, this shot right now, mm-hmm. um, behind Dyer is a uh, is a row of bamboo. <laughs> and um, as we no, all know, it's, oh, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you almost? <laughs> I wa- I couldn't see the forest for the the grass here. Yeah, right, right. And and folks, we know. I mean, well, hell, let's just let's just play that clip again. <laughs> oh, well, bamboo is the uh, world's tallest grass. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, right as as we <laughs> as we learned on this show, uh, bamboo is a is not a tree. It is no. a very tall, uh, very the robust grass. Tallest grass. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So um, so there we go, folks. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, uh, we we cut, and we're back on Kinderman, um, and he says, "Well, I get passes, you know. I and get grasses. You I know. get grass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get all sorts of grasses, uh, you know, crab grass and uh, and and bamboo, and uh, you know, Mrs. K. She wants she wants the lawn freshly mowed every other week, uh, but I need someone to help me, Father." <laughs> Oh, so now Tyre is just going to be the lawn boy? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a terrible he's, fate for him. He's going to be, he's not the lawn boy, a lawn boy, right? <laughs> Along with Kinderman. Yeah. <laughs> what a terrible fate. I'm so glad I don't have any grass in my. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got, we got our, uh, we got our um, uh, uh, desert themed uh, uh, front yards and backyards, mm-hmm. folks, right? Just like lovely rock uh, um, landscapes. Mm-hmm. Which don't waste water. Mm-hmm. You hear that, rest of right. the United States? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, this this is the like the joke for us for Kinderman, mm-hmm. right? Is him saying it's like, well, I get passes, you know, right? Mm-hmm. So I couldn't I couldn't pass that up. Um, <laughs> and 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 folks, he doesn't go in the direction of the do not enter sign. Instead, right. he starts walking back towards Dyer. And as he's talking, we see him start to smile. He says, in fact, I got a pass to the crest tomorrow night. Uh, Would you like to go? And by the time he's back with Dyer on the sidewalk, Dyer's shoulder sort of slides into the shot, making it an Mm -hmm. over-the-shoulder. Dyer says, what's playing? And without missing a beat, Kinderman says, Wuthering Heights. Mm -hmm. And the way he says it, to me, it feels like he's already sensing that Dyer's going to do the same thing that Dimmy did, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's supposed to be like the surprise for us, the audience, right? This callback to, you know, the joke they shared. But you can see in his eyes as early as what's playing, Kinderman is thinking, oh, is this another one, right? Mm-hmm. And so he says, Wuthering Heights. And Dyer shoots back, who's in it? And I love the tiny pause Lee J. Cobb does here it's really quick but it's a little longer than the space between who's playing and Wuthering Heights and I think they did that on purpose like Mm -hmm. make the Wuthering Heights response a little quicker than normal so that this normal pause here seems both short and long at the same time that way we get to catch Kinderman off guard like like we see that the question makes him pause but even with the pause we still think man he came up with that joke answer real quick right All right so the rhythm of this exchange is so important like we we want to show that Kinderman was surprised by the line but also quick on his feet so Dyer says who's uh in it and Kinderman takes a little breath and he says Heathcliff Jackie Gleason and in the role of Catherine Earnshaw Lucille Ball 
Mm-hmm. Now, I feel like everybody knows Lucille Ball. I love Lucy, etc. Uh, mm-hmm. But Keenan, could you enlighten us just a little on Jackie Gleason? I feel like he doesn't need an introduction either, but like maybe maybe just a quick primer. Oh, yeah. Well, we talked about him before uh, making jokes about uh you know, punching his wife in the face. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. remember? Did yeah. we leave that in? <laughs> I can't remember we left that in. I mean, yeah, it's like, it's like one of these days, bam, right to the moon. Yeah. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. Bam, pow, Alice. Yeah. So he, yeah. he, he was a radio comedian who did the honeymooners, um, mm-hmm. which was based on one of his sketches that he did on, um, on a, a short TV uh, mm. sketch and that he turned into that big career. Uh-huh. And then uh, he also got into dramatic roles. So it's not, it's not like completely unheard of that he would be in a Wuthering Heights, but no, the joke is that he's mostly known for comedic roles. Yeah. Right. These are these are two comedians in in the role. That's that's yeah. that's Kinderman's whole thing. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Yeah, because it wouldn't be it wouldn't be. Um, I mean, Lucille Ball had left drama way behind, so she was originally a drama actor, and right. then, mm-hmm. which was I think wrong for her. Mm-hmm. Um, and her studios misused her, and then when she, but once she got onto the radio and did her um, her show, My Favorite Husband, that became I Love Lucy. She was a comedian from that. Yeah, on. yeah. So so yeah. So these two comedy icons playing Heath uh, Heathcliff and uh, Catherine Ernst Shaw, mm-hmm. right? Like it's a gag, right? Just right. just like his exchange with Dimmy, right? It's a nice callback right. to to a happier time and also a callback to Dimmy, right? Mm-hmm. Dimmy's ghost may be at the bottom of those steps, but his spirit is mm-hmm. being recalled in this exchange, right? Um, and to further hammer it home, we cut. Now we're over Kinderman's shoulder looking at Dyer and Dyer says, I've seen it. Mm-hmm. Same deadpan delivery as Dimmy or it starts that way, but Dyer cannot hold back his smile. And I like to think that's I like to think that he's smiling not at the joke he just made, but the fact that he was able to get Kinderman in the exact same way that Dimmy did. Mm -hmm. Um, Because Dimmy probably told him about this whole exchange, right? I can imagine like, you know, that conversation. Dyer's like, hey, who's that, uh, you know, detective poking around? I heard he Mm -hmm. talked to you. Like, what did he say? He's like, and Dimmy's like, oh, he asked me to see a movie. A movie? Like, what movie? (laughs) Othello. What'd you say? Well, uh, I asked him who's in it. He said, uh, Debbie Reynolds, Desdemona, and Othello, Groucho Marx. Mm-hmm. And Dyer's like, huh, and what did you say? I said, I seen it. <laughs> right? You know, and they laugh, and maybe maybe that's like the first real laugh that Dimmy's had since, mm-hmm. you know, he lost his mom. Mm-hmm. So, so I like to think that's what Dyer is smiling about here, that he was able to honor Dimmy yep. by getting Kinderman in the same way. Yeah, that yeah. that's an interesting question, like how much they've discussed uh, uh, the case with each other and all of that. Because in some ways, like uh, mm. Demi wants to keep it to himself, because uh, it. Um, but right. in other ways, yeah, Dyer is his one really close friend, or the only one that we really see in the movie. Yeah, but what do you think? Like, do you think that's why Dyer is smiling here? Like he's recalling Demi. It's not at the joke. It's like the. The memory of Dimmy. Maybe, but I, yeah, I guess that's a nice happy ending. The other alternative is that uh, Kinderman just does find someone who's like Dimmy. Uh, and, mm. and, you know, um, Dyer hasn't been tipped off to this, but just, you know, has the right answer to the joke, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, it could, and, and it's perfect uh, response by Kinderman mm-hmm, here, right? right. We, we cut back and Kinderman is... Not as taken aback as I remember. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in, I think in the book he's a little bit more like ah, just my luck, right. another smartass, mm-hmm. right? Um, it's still funny, but he's like chalking it up to you know I don't know like all these Jesuits are are smartasses, right? right? Mm-hmm. But here, for me, I feel like mm-hmm. it's it's we see him understanding that Dyer is doing this because Dimmy did it, uh-huh. and so now Kinderman's response here, like he's trying to be you know gruff and offended he looks he looks dire up and down and he says another one Mm -hmm. um in that detective voice but that that smile is threatening to blossom on his face as well so so he's made his face even grouchier and craggier Mm. um and then he turns away to look up the street and then back at dire and he says had your lunch and we see a little more of that smile it's it's not out there yet we'll have to wait until the next minute the last minute mm-hmm. of our of our movie proper um and yes folks we're gonna stick around for the credits um we'll we'll talk about the credits on the screen but we're also going to fill those minutes with other stuff as well um so 
the next minute is going to be uh, partially the credits and then also our mailbag episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna read all the uh, all the messages that you uh, that you wrote into us, um, and then after that, the minute after that is going to be like right about when Linda Blair's uh, name pops up in the credits. We're gonna talk about. Exorcist II, mm-hmm. The Heretic. Uh, so that'll be uh, uh, dedicated to that movie, that minute. Um, and then, of course, after that, we're going to talk about Exorcist Three in the next minute. And Legion, the book. Uh, yeah, and Legion, the book. Um, and after that, we're going to go into the prequels. So the prequels are going to get their own uh, minute. We're going to talk about both of those. And then finally, the last minute, uh, minute 132, we're going to talk about uh, the TV show, right? Uh, the first season of the TV show. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, if you haven't seen any of those yet, check them out before their minutes come up so you can, uh, you can be in here with us as we, as we talk about them. Mm-hmm. But for now, that is all of my notes. Keenan, is there anything else? No, I think we got it. All right, folks. This has been another excellent Exorcist Minute. I've been Lester Ryan Clark. You can reach me on all the socials as Lester Ryan Clark. And I've been Keenan Diaz. You can find me on Instagram and Letterbox at Howdy Keenan. Yeah, we got our listener group, Compelling Conversations. Go check that out and request to join, and we'll let you in here with us. Thank you so much to everyone who has shared the show by word of mouth or on social media. And a big thank you to everyone who has given us a five-star ratings on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you listen to our show. We really appreciate it. It's going to help our podcast grow and find more cool people like you okay keenan are you thinking what i'm thinking i think i am lester folks until next time the, the power, power of the misadventures of, of carl engstrom, engstrom compels, compels. So he's like a he's like a hardboiled detective, I guess. He's accused of murder. He has to solve the murder himself in this version. Well, he yeah, he's 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 a hardboiled detective, right? Disguised as a butler. <laughs> oh, I see. Yes, yes. yes. Well, I, I you know I don't want to spoil it for our listeners, mm-hmm. but yeah, what secret do those white gloves hold? Yes, those white gloves which can embrace and also strangle. <laughs> Right. So it's not that he has strangled Burke, but he has strangled someone before in his past. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. absolutely. He, uh-huh. He's strangled someone who uh, has threatened um, has threatened Elvira. Yes, I believe so. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was Elvira's first boyfriend. And we will speak no more of him. <laughs> not even his name. No. <laughs> It was, Oddly, it was Gunter. It was Gunter. It was Gunter. Gunter. <laughs> Gunter Armoire. <laughs> so now, whenever it's, he hears that word, Armoire, right. mm-hmm. just the, the, the hairs in the back of his neck rise up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. There's murder on his mind. Right. Does Willie know about all of the misadventures of Carl Engstrom? Well, I don't want to spoil it for you, Keenan, but mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I I I guess you. I guess you, you you forced my hand here, but um, you know, uh, at at the end of the book, um, in a in an abandoned warehouse, mm. uh, uh, Carl finally gets to confront um, uh, the entity known as Mister Big, <laughs> and uh, and you know he's he's been he's been talking to Mister Big over the mm-hmm. phone, right. but uh, you know he can tell that there's some kind of like you know. Uh, voice modulation thing, right? <laughs> right. Uh, so he can't, he can't actually like hear what Mister Big sounds like, mm-hmm. right? And and like, ah, like maybe like at one point, like when he was, uh, you know, when he was on a on a date with Willie, he was off mm-hmm. the clock, and he was, you know, he was just having having a little fun, just trying to just trying to be, you know, like a, like a good husband, right? Um, mm-hmm. But you know, Willie had to Willie had to, um, you know, 
run and, and uh, get a, a refill on the popcorn. Um, and, uh, and then suddenly, like while she was away, you know, you, you, you see on the, on the, the, the big screen of the drive-in, um, you know, the, the movie is shut off and, and Mr. Big makes an announcement mm. and it's his silhouette and it's, and it's terrible. And, 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 and Carl's just, Carl's just worried about Willie. Where, where is she, you know, and, and like, is she safe? Right. But, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, like, like right as, uh, you know, Mr. Big, uh, makes his escape, uh, you mm. know, Willie, Willie comes back and she's like, Oh, this is a, what did I miss? It, it was a lot of commotion and, uh, you know, um, and yeah, so, so now, you know, in the final, uh, part of, of, uh, of the novel, um, he's in the, uh, he's in the warehouse and, mm-hmm. and off in the distance, just in the middle of this, this abandoned space, you see just like one, uh, lamp and it's kind of flickering and it's, and it's hovering over, um, over a chair and, uh, and, and, and someone's, you know, uh, uh, tied to it and they got, they got a hood over their face oh, and, and standing over that person is Mr. Big. Mm. And he's a little bit shorter than than uh Carl had uh, mm-hmm. had expected, right? Remember mm-hmm. he's only seen like the you know the the shadow Silhouette kind of right like here. stretching over the walls, right? You got a big low voice though yeah. on the phone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and he walks closer and he says, "Mr. Big, I have I've come with the ransom money. Mm-hmm. Please let my partner Detective Kinderman go." Mm. And Kinderman's eyes are like, no, don't, don't make the deal, don't yeah, make no, the deal. No, right? no. <laughs> this is this is just like that movie, right? <laughs> and one of Mr. Big's goons, because because they're there also, right, like, right, I forgot right, to right. make like just you know slaps him, right? <laughs> but then Mr. Big holds up a hand, right? It's like stop mm-hmm. all this, stop all this foolishness, right? Mm-hmm. And the other hand mm-hmm. just reaches up, and you see just like this 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 tiny red dot mm. as he drags on the cigarette, mm-hmm. and then blows it out. And we hear Mr. Big's voice unfiltered. And he says, Well, 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 mein husband. <laughs> no. <laughs> looks like looks like you have fallen into the mouse trap. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, and that's the end of the book. <laughs> and you have to you have to get wait all summer for the next book to come out. <laughs> <laughs> See, and you didn't you didn't realize it. The no. title the title was mm. The Miss <laughs> Adventures. <You're> right. <laughs> but actually it was the Misses Adventures. Whoa. <laughs> well, that is crazy. I can't mm-hmm. wait till we write that book and <laughs> publish it and get to read it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Willie is Mr. Big. I'm just 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 <laughs> 